you for joining us for this special edition of PSL Living. Sarah, <laughs> it is special. Instead of PSL Living, let's go with News You Need. Sounds PSL. good, Mayor. That sounds great. So in today's world, it seems like if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. And we never get beyond 140 characters. And I think there's a deeper story to tell in PSL, especially about important things like our Torrey Pines Institute for Molecular Studies. Mm -hmm. Is it studies or is it science, Doc? Studies. Excellent. Right. And that's, I think, a good segue to not only have introduce our uh, venerable public information officer, Sarah Prohaska, but also our special guest today. Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Richard Houghton, and I'm the CEO and founder of the Torrey Pines Institute. And I have a PhD from Berkeley, and that's who I am. Great. Good morning. I'm Greg Wellmaker. I'm the President and Chief Operating Officer at Torrey Pines, also serve as Director of Drug Discovery. Very happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. Thank Very you. happy. Thank you for joining us. Thank it's you. great to get some news straight from the source. Mm -hmm. It is. And I think one of the things that we missed uh, just in the, in the news is what is Torrey Pines and uh, what does it do? Okay. Let me give a st take a stab at that. Torrey Pines is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And what that means in a bigger sense is what we actually do within Torrey Pines is basic research focused on medical issues. Uh, we have internally to Torrey Pines, we have research in Alzheimer's, research in pain, research in drug addiction, and, and a range of others within Torrey Pines. But the other aspect of what Torrey Pines is about is our very broad, nationally, internationally useful drug discovery tools. And we'll come back to that over and over again. But Torrey Pines carries out research that is not just playing in the sandbox. It's research that's focused and targeted on ameliorating disease areas across the board. And, and I like that you hit on that it's to be useful. And I think... Greg, is that a big part of uh, your role at Torrey Pines and not just science in a box, but bringing that science to, to help people? Yes, I, I view my role, and, and several years ago when I became the director of drug discovery at Torrey Pines, it was to you know, take the good research that's going on and push it forward as quickly and as fast as we can because science is great, but it mm -hmm. needs to be useful and it needs to be applied. And as we move things forward, Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. When they don't work, then clearly we have an issue we go back and address and look at again. And like Richard said, within Torrey Pines, we're looking at Alzheimer's and cancer and pain and the major things that a lot of other institutes are doing. But simply put, the goal of Torrey Pines is to find those new compounds that, be, that can become the medications of the future to not only maybe treat you, but your children, your grandchildren, and generations to come. Right. And I guess for the layman, mm -hmm. what kind of compounds are you working with? At, and, and for short, we're going to go TPI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, within Torrey Pines, it started almost 30 years ago when, when Dr. Houghton formed Torrey Pines and began the work. And it started around what are called peptides. And peptides are, are, are structures made up of individual amino acids that are put together. These amino acids make the proteins within your body but peptides are shorter uh, chains of amino acids. So it began there. And I would tell you that under Dr. Houghton's leadership and his team at Torrey Pines, they've created probably the world's largest collection of peptides. And, and the number is actually in the trillions. And that's with a T, it's you know federal government budget numbers <laughs> uh, for, for those out there. But we have trillions of peptides here in Port St. Lucie. But in addition to that, the technologies that have been created more recently over the past decade or so have involved taking the original peptide structures and converting them into what within the industry we call small molecules. Now, small molecules are wanted by the pharmaceutical industry, especially in the United States, because small molecules are more bioavailable, which means you can take them as a pill. And, and that's usually the route of administration that's desired. Peptides are not as good taken orally, so a lot of times those are given by IV or injections or, or other routes of administration, but the small molecules are, are used orally. That's what people want to sell as pills. 
Our collection at Torrey Pines is over 7 million. A lot of the peptides we originally look at, they may be natural, they may be the enkephalins, the endorphins, the pain relieving compounds that are normal to your body. But we've come up with technology where you don't take one naturally occurring compound, we can take that one naturally occurring compound and make millions of others from it. So the millions we make are not natural, right. but they're better. But that's a source of inspiration. So that yes. natural one or wherever it came from. Exactly. And now you have the, the science and the intelligence. Uh, we're going to play with that part of the structure. We're going to put one of those groups exactly. on the end of it, and maybe we will get the outcome that we want. Yes. Because you're all about taking that protein or that peptide and producing a what a dependable and hopefully it has to be repeatable right. outcome yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Right. And we've had go ahead, Greg. The only thing I would correct you on, you made a statement that we use our intelligence. <laughs> and while I think we do, as most people know, science is trial and error. Mm -hmm. And the technology is created at Torrey Pines allows us this is why we need a trillion. To, to screen, right. to find what is best, because we can't predict. And so what's happened at Torrey Pines is the capability of making these and testing so that the science leads us instead of us trying to say, well, this is going to be the best thing, because right. we don't know. We have had two or three compounds. I've got one in mm -hmm. mind right now. Uh, we came up with this compound out of a library of 6.25 million compounds. We found highly specific compounds that do not get into the brain, work in the periphery, these are now in phase three human trials, multiple phase three human trials. And it's taken almost 20 years to get from, we discovered it, we patented it, we licensed it. Now it's in multiple phase three human trials for pain and it's working very well. So it's a process uh, and Greg knows this process better than I do since he's been in the pharmaceutical industry. My experience says, if it's 10 years, that's a nice short time. If it's 20 years, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. So Doc, yeah. as, as you're describing the, the assay process and of finding the compounds that are active, I'm thinking of just a common uh, contemporary culture, I Am Legend, a movie with Will Smith, and I know it has nothing to do with the deep science you do, but he actually goes through the process for those people at home and he's trying different compounds to see if it uh, provides uh, positive impact and outcome, a cure, if you will. And first he's trying in certain animals and then he goes to human subjects. And at the end of the day, that's a very Hollywood generalized version of, of what you were sharing. That's exactly what we do. And uh, the steps you take, if you look at it in a test tube assay, if it works there, that's nice, you're excited. And then you go to mice or rats, and if it works there, then you're further excited. And then you go on to the next level. It might be a, a, a primate, it might be a, a rabbit or a dog or whatnot. Oftentimes, unfortunately, you get all through that and you test it in a human and it doesn't work. So there's that part. But you have to go through these initial steps first. And that's, that's a process that is expensive. And I, just as an aside, we use mice. I would say every mouse we use is equivalent to one day in a Motel 6, mm. literally. And we use thousands of mice a year. So it's, it's a process. We have to follow it. We, we are not allowed to get the mayor and have, Mayor, would you try this compound for me? <laughs> Will it turn me yeah. into the flash or the incredible ball <laughs> exactly. come open to powers. either of those outcomes? Yeah. Or super soldier. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Captain America. You got to love yeah. him. Um, but it, it's, it's really, when we came up with this concept, we tested it and retested it and retested it. The scientific method says it better be reproducible. So when we first came up with this, we said, wow, that's pretty audacious. We're not going to look at one compound at a time. We're going to look at 10,000, 10 million compounds at one time. And that was completely against the orthodoxy of our, my scientific colleagues. But since we knew... because you were a rebel from Berkeley, sir. Mm -hmm. That's right. I never <laughs> thought about that. Um, but, but the reality is the scientific community is quite conservative. And with some good reasons and some negative reasons. We knew that if we popped this out in a publication, we were going to get um, some negative comments. So we tested it, retested it made sure our scientific method was correct and we weren't 
diluting ourselves. We didn't change more than one variable at a time. You don't jump ahead and test a whole bunch of different things. And it worked. And we have not had a single retraction in 28 years of work. Wow. So it, the amount of effort that goes into being the changing the paradigm is very large and exciting. It's incredibly exciting. I can remember some of these methods we came up with and I'd have an idea and I'd walk up and down a hardware store looking at different inventions. The hardware store is full of inventions, thousands of them, and looking for a little prompt, a little bump for me to say, that's what I'm looking for. Boom. And then we'll go back to the lab and try that. And, you know, it's I, just for me personally, when you come up with something and you've, you've mastered a field, but when you come up with something that changes your field, it is really quite like almost nothing else you experience in life. Perhaps it's second behind having your children. That's the Eureka phenomenon, yeah. everybody. Yep. That, yeah. that, is, that is, the light bulb is going off. It's the Eureka and the creation process. And well, my takeaway from that is that Torrey Pines is a home improvement superstore mm -hmm. with instead of nuts and bolts and uh, sc screwdrivers and drills, you have polypeptides. Yep that yeah. have specific outcomes. You're a polypeptide factory. What I would add that I think people might be really interested in is what is different about Tory Pines? Because we talked about, we do research, we do Alzheimer's, we do cancer, right. we do pain. A lot of institutes do that. But what makes Tory Pines unique, and I'm gonna talk about some of the, the smaller things and then get to the, to the bigger things that we, we've alluded to already. But one of the things that makes Tory Pines unique, especially here within Florida, is the man to my left, Dr. Richard Houghton. We have the president, or the former president, CEO, founder of Torrey Pines still with us. He's here, he's running the institute. Most institutes no longer have the person who founded them, leading it, running it. To, to add to that, the fact that he moved the headquarters here. We are headquartered in Florida. Yes, we still maintain operations in California, but the headquarters are here. Our focus is here. We're much larger here now than we than we uh, are in California. So those are two positives for for Florida. Well, and I appreciate that you have them, mm -hmm. and then I appreciate that the the founders right here yes. in, in PSL, yeah. and you're a dynamic duo, and you have a greater team right here, and you're here, not in Cali. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and I think the one thing you should know, and everyone in Port St. Lucie should know, is we are very committed to Port St. Lucie. Yes. We came here for a purpose. We're going to make this work. We are so going I, to make this work. When I read that newspaper article and it made me feel like you were going to leave in the middle of the night, yeah. that's not true? No. no. We, we are not going anywhere. Uh, Richard has talked a lot about these libraries of compounds that we've created. This is He said trillions. With yes, trillions. trillions. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and we call them compound libraries. So people are, are thinking about books on a shelf. No, they're, they're, they're organized compounds ready for screening. But it's true equity for Torrey Pines. And this is where, this is the other thing that makes us unique is that we have this collection of compounds. It has created opportunities for us in Japan. Just this past week, we had a visitor from a pharmaceutical company in Europe visiting with us, talking about how they can maybe use these libraries. It's what got us into, we may talk about this later, the National Cancer Institute's yeah. Experimental Therapeutics Program. The only one in Florida. We're, we're the, the only institute ever in Florida to be part of this, where the National Cancer Institute within the National Institutes of Health is determined to find compounds and move them to human clinical trials. And they pulled us in specifically for our compound libraries. But we're using these to sell and partner with for-profits as well as non-profits because we have something they need and it's unlike any other collection in the world and the interest is is pretty large we had a conversation right before thanksgiving with a biotech mm -hmm. company in california who I'll, <laughs> i got thrilled because they made the statement right up front we've got 300 million in cash and we're looking to invest i love nice. it <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we intro. can certainly help them invest yes so, sarah why don't you lead with that from now on in this show there you go yeah, come that, on that would be yeah. that yeah i wish we could do that <laughs> so, so but but it does make tory pines unique and and along those same lines because of our chemistry technologies and these libraries We've had discussions with other institutes, and occasionally those institutes have said, well, what if we partner? What if we, you, you were to join us? And I want you to know, I want the city to know that those discussions begin with the simple statement that 
we're happy to have that discussion as long as it is always Tory Pines in Port St. Lucie. Yeah, we, yeah, we'd love and to we have We start them. right Absolutely. here. Oh, yeah. If they want to partner with us and, and help us here, we're mm -hmm. more than happy. But if they're looking for us to join them somewhere else, it's a non-starter. Right. And then feel free to send me wherever uh, as, as, your, as your envoy. Oh, Japan. Yeah. Your yeah. Japan. Oh, no, please. Oh, no, 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 I think this is so interesting. I've lived in Port St. Lucie a long time. Uh -huh. Torrey Pines is a name a lot of residents know, sure. but they don't really know what you do there. So this is great. Great. This is fascinating right. to me because I'm learning stuff right. that what's actually happening here in Port St. Lucie is so innovative. It's wonderful. What? I, yeah. I actually had a quick question. Why, what exactly attracted you 10 years ago mm. to our area, to Port St. Lucie? I can very clearly. Mm -hmm explain that. Mm -hmm. My wife Panama and I and our, and our daughter Lacey were here. Mm -hmm. We've been invited by Jeb Bush and we came out for the first time and it was we had discussions with Palm Beach and that kind of fell through and Governor Bush opened it up to the entire state. Mm -hmm. So we were going to travel up to Orlando and they and we got a call from the uh, economic development officer in Port St. Lucie asking if we could stop by for a 15 minute conversation. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Uh, and what was striking to us, two things, the quality of the individuals we were talking to, Ken Pruitt, uh, Pete Hegner, uh, I mean, across the board, Mayor Minsky, I mean, everybody, we were stunned at the level of intelligence, the level of vision uh, in, in that group. And there were two things, you know, I, I'm married, I have a wife and children, and what we were struck by is at the time, Port St. Lucie was one of the fastest growing municipalities in the country. Mm -hmm. And we looked at this as ability to be part of a growing community and maybe help in some way. But the vision was there amongst all of them. And this is 2006. So mm -hmm. the vision was there and IH funding was great. Uh, we had these incentives from the state and the, and the city. We were completely excited. And here is a dynamic growing community and then seven eight and the, the it fell out yeah now before we get to that mm -hmm. doc yeah. mm -hmm. if we could just maybe underscore some of the points that you made or even if it make you uncomfortable i want to mm -hmm. explore a couple of those points i think it's important for everyone so mm -hmm. back then governor bush right he is along with leaders in florida they've looked into the future they've seen the importance of biotech mm -hmm. life sciences medical to the future of the economy and they want to transition Florida's economy away from ag construction tourism mm -hmm. yep. and uh, I believe that Governor Bush called it project air conditioning because <laughs> he wanted this to be a as important to Florida as the air condition was that he totally wanted to change the economy and and that's what the leaders of our state went into mm -hmm. at that time in attracting companies mm -hmm. like TPI and scripts and you're from you right. know you you obviously worked for them before you started your own uh so that's what brought you here i actually watched you before palm beach and and i think that and this can't be understated the importance of being welcomed mm -hmm. and of offering true cooperation and collaboration it matters it does and, and i bring this up doc because that partnership, it, any relationship, and you're married, I'm married, uh, there's the courting process. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to have a quality relationship over the long term, right. it can't just be about the courting. Right. You have to continue to communicate and put your work in for as long as you're together. Absolutely. And, and we're together. Right. We're a team. Mm -hmm. And it just, for me, it's so important that the people of Port St. Lucie get to know the real Tory Pines. Right and the team and how important it is for us to work together in the future because in all seriousness the compound that cures alzheimer's or you know produces positive outcomes it, its impact could be discovered right right here in port st Lucie. it could yes we could change the world together because of our cooperation yes. because of our relationship and I think it's incredibly unfair to you and your team, because you were just about to get to the 
recession, which was really here, a depression, and the hard times, and you've been fighting, 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 and that positive story never gets shared, we focus on the negative. And I just want to remind everyone how important it is to communicate and to appreciate. Well, I think going back to the beginning, that's what we felt. You know, we were, it was going to be a 50-minute whistle stop, and we would be on our way up to Orlando and then Tallahassee and then other places. I think it was long. It ended up being an entire day. And at the end of the day, we were said, we would like you to go visit a community college. My wife, Pam, and I were exhausted. And we, <laughs> please, <laughs> you know. But we went and visited IRCC. We met Ed Massey, another visionary. And quite frankly, that was one of the final pins in our decision. Uh, and the other part of it was every time place we had been, we would, at the end of the day, we're kind of wiped out, we'd go to the hotel, and then we'd say, let's go out in the community. Let's go to the public. Let's go to wherever. Let's go to dinner somewhere. Let's get a sense of who these people are. And we liked what we saw. We liked the people. We liked the community. And we saw the vision that was there amongst the people. And so it, it's, it, it was a fit right away. We still went on and, and looked at Orlando and looked at Tallahassee and looked at other places. But it kept coming back. And after our daughter, and we were finished this long tour, and she said, Lacey, she said, we asked her, well, where are we going to be? She said, oh, Port St. Lucie. And I said, oh, why do you say that? <laughs> she said, the people are so nice. These are the things that drew us to this community and keep us here. This is our home now. And, and so and we're, we're proud to be here, and we plan to be here for a long time. And I, I think I'd like Greg to jump in okay. in terms of his, what, the way he describes why we'll be here. And you, you've done a very nice job of that, Greg. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's... It's essentially the, the answer to, to how Torrey Pines has managed itself over the past several years is, is just fiscal responsibility. Right. I mean, everybody is aware that Torrey Pines came with a contract with the state of Florida to hire so many people over a certain period of time. And those metrics were all set in 2006 when mm -hmm. the economy was very different, money was flowing, everything was great. And there came a point with, you know, the collapse of the economy, the NIH funding drop, and then sequestration that came on top of that, where Torrey Pines had a decision to make. We could continue to meet the hiring yep. numbers and, and make sure that we abide by the state contract or not. And if we chose to, to meet those numbers, we would have closed our doors. So I you mean, would have driven off mm -hmm. of a cliff, basically. Yes. Exactly. I mean, it, there, there's, mm -hmm. there's only so much money you can spend you know what you have and if it's all gone you're done you didn't want to create that burn rate you didn't want to drive off the cliff because you've been trying to create a sustainable organization yes. right and, and Torrey Pines has been around for nearly 30 years and the way it works at Torrey Pines is our researchers are responsible for finding their own funding for their group and their research now I mentioned earlier we have these libraries that we try and sell that we can have this base to supplement as well but essentially if a researcher today has three grants and he's got a group of you know 15 people working in his lab and one of those grants ends and doesn't get renewed his group is going to get smaller mm -hmm. that's just the nature if you don't have the money you can't pay the people and things ebb and flow and so as the money comes back we grow as the money goes down we have to shrink and, and so could, and could i be doing a little poke over here with sure, my exactly. Yeah, and expanding and one of the points i like to make today and, and put it just in terms of what the economy has done. And I remind Richard about this all the time. When he visited Port St. Lucie in 2006, yep. and they took him to what's called the Southern Grove mm -hmm. section of tradition, you know, from, from uh, all the way down Village Parkway, I don't think anybody in their wildest dreams thought it would look the way it looks today. I mean, that whole section was supposed to be built out in five years, much less 10 years. But with that being said, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, it's it, coming, yes. the, the construction is yeah. coming now. And I ask that people put Torrey Pines in that same perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did not grow as fast as the state contract asked us to, but it doesn't mean we're not going to. And right. that's the goal, and that's where we're headed, that we have to do it in a fiscally responsible manner so that we don't grow and meet our numbers and then go bust. Right. It's got to be done in a way that 
once we get there, we're there going forward. And, you know, I am excited to, to tell you we're going to be here for decades. So, you know, yeah, we hate that we had a recession and really a depression here. Yeah. But it's so much better to it be happens. coming out of it, isn't it? Sure. So, so right now, in addition to TPI and doing your thing and, and surviving and, and growing, uh, we have Tradition Hospital that's put it on three floors because they opened to 100% mm -hmm. occupancy. Mm -hmm. There's a medical office building yep. under construction right now. Kaiser yep. is mm -hmm. under construction. Recovery Sports mm -hmm. Bar and Grill is going up on the lake so you can go yeah. run and, mm -hmm. and get lunch or a drink yeah. there, just a, a walk away. Now, in that same area, we also have a, a lab that's yep. turning out to be city owned mm -hmm. yeah. uh, next door. We want to fill it. What are your thoughts on, on what you'd like to see at that at that lab? Oh, I'm not quite sure where, how, how you mean that, but every, if you will, high tech or, or laboratory setting uh, that can be put together brings not necessarily super high paying job, but very unique, useful jobs in terms of the intellectual capital of the of the community and uh, we are very pleased with what's happening you know going back to Tory Pines and we've had ups and downs and ups and downs and on, on your theme it, I use a sort of cliche if you survive you win uh -huh. so our goal and we've always adjusted to it's the very time. Darwinian of you <laughs> <laughs> yep and down and up whoa we have to adjust this we have yeah. to adjust our finances and certainly in the last eight years we've adjusted and then Greg's been enormously helpful in this and, and one of the key players in helping me do this and us do this uh, you adjust to the times or you get crushed mm -hmm. and we are not going to get crushed and, and back back to your your point we were very sad to see what happened next yeah. door mm -hmm. we that was not competition you know, mm -hmm. we, we need those around us to build us all up. So with that building, we hope it gets filled yeah. with, with researchers, or, or with scientists. Research. Yeah. That's yeah. It's not competition. Yeah. We, we want, we want yeah. collaboration. Yep. You know, if it's an opportunity for us to collaborate with who comes in, that's, Perfect. that's great for all of us. And, it, and as we've shared with you before, if there's anything we can do to help the city, and it's you know recruitment yep. of whoever whatever we're happy to do it oh, because we, we want to see that building yeah. filled right. with active research a vibrant community because as that happens we'll have greater success in recruiting others here and bringing other people i mean we have our own spin-off companies that we could talk yep. about that are going on within the tory pines facility but you know we want to continue to recruit and bring it here yep. because the vision that was set out 10 years ago is still possible and I believe it can happen. And I believe it can actually you know, happen here in Port St. Lucie because today's technology, you don't have to be right next door to everybody. I mean, we ran a program right. that encompassed the entire state, so, which we called the Florida Drug Discovery Acceleration Program, which had 15 institutes, you know, all the way from Miami to Tallahassee, you know, that covered the state. It's, it's very easy to do today. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's great to have somebody next door we want those jobs. We want those people to come in. You know, it's not competition. It's sustainability for us all. Sarah and I have a, a shared job. We have to communicate with the people. Yeah. And we also communicate with the press on a number of things. And one of the questions we get here locally are about incentives and how did the city participate with right. Torrey Pines. And it's just, it's so important for yeah. us, Sarah, to get this message out there. Uh, because the city has made a number of economic uh, in investments over the years because we were a bedroom community and things were a lot different in the early and mid-2000s. As you pointed out, we were one of the, the fastest growing and, and then we weren't. And mm -hmm. councils at the time made investments in economic development. They wanted us to be more than a bedroom community. And with Torrey Pines, the original deal was that the city would build the lab. Right. Now, the city was going to build the lab but it's not the general fund, and this is the real key. It's yeah. not the general fund. It's not the property tax dollars that paid for the lab. There was an actual impact fee created, right. impact fee on new growth, so that when new development came to the city, not the existing taxpayers or not on property taxes, but when new development came to the city, that there would be an economic development, a public building impact fee paid, and those impact fees would be used mm -hmm. to build the Torrey right. Pines Institute's mm -hmm. laboratory. 
And that's important to stress. It's new growth. It that's is, right. It was not a fee on existing right. homeowners or existing uh, anyone existing. It's new. That's what an impact and fee is. It's not part of your tax mm -hmm. bill. Uh, so at the end of the day, just like new development pays for mm -hmm. roads mm -hmm. or water and sewer, mm -hmm. uh, it in Port St. Lucie, new growth pays for job creation mm -hmm. in the form of a lab for this incredible biotech. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm full disclosure guy, yeah. you know that. <laughs> we had a little thing uh, that was a depression here, and as a result, new growth did this. Yep. Yeah. And as a result, we didn't have the impact fees that we needed to, to basically make the mortgage payment sure. on the lab. And so during that period of time, the general fund, our general mm -hmm. fund where tax dollars are, are kept, they did help pay, mm -hmm. but it was a loan. Mm -hmm. And so as now we're, we're in the recovery here, things are so much better. Mm -hmm. And again, we're a city on the rise. That loan can be repaid and the impact fee as originally intended will have paid right. for the Torrey Pines yeah. lab. And just wanted to share that while yeah. we had yeah. you here. It's such an, a good time to share it with with the people. Yeah. Well, because they keep on being so excited about their <laughs> molecules, I thought we'd play a little game called <laughs> Name That Molecule. And Sarah, okay, I want you to feel let, free. All right, I, might, I may not um, be a for Did this Did you ever game. take organic chemistry? I did, but all it's right. been a long time. Oh, so oh, good. you're time. definitely a contestant then. I, I, uh, I can't say I did great. <laughs> well, the average uh, score in my organic chemistry class uh, at University of Miami was a 53. Um, so I remember it being very difficult. Yeah, I went to UF and most people failed it. Yeah. If yeah. I, most, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out easy, all right? Okay. Cause I know, I don't know if you're in the lab every day looking at uh, molecules or not. All right, so. Mickey Mouse. Hey, <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> so people at PSL, this is it. We're starting yeah, simple. Mickey, yeah, Mickey and Minnie. Mickey and Minnie. Uh, Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> Yes, agua it is, H2O. H2O. Can't have life on go. Earth without it. They're, hey, they're, they're doctors. It's, this is easy for <laughs> Super them. Super easy. All right, PSL, you see that? Ooh. DNA. 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 Oh my it goodness, is. you chimed in before yeah. me, but I, I was afraid like, to say it. Oh I, that boy. was a trick question. It was too easy. So this one's a little bit more <laughs> okay. intricate. All right, you see that? Yeah. Oh, sugar. What? Oh, it, it is a sugar, and it's it's, it's a really glucose. important one. Yeah, yeah this glucose. guy is. Can you tell he's award winning? Or what? It there is glucose. Go. That that's glucose, everybody. If you don't have that going to your brain right now, you're probably not paying attention to us at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a little hint for the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, PSL. Can you see that? This is right up their alley. Tryptophan. Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. they got oh, it. And tryptophan oh, is, uh, is an amino, amino acid, acid, amino acid which, which goes into our peptides. Bingo, bingo. Yeah. That's it. Yes. There you go. All right, well, thank you for playing the game. And you, you, did not, you did not disappoint. But, Mayor, I wanted to ask you from your perspective as Mayor of Port St. Lucie, what do you see for the future? We've, to see, we've heard from doc the doctors. What do you see for the future of this collaboration with the city and Torrey Pines? I see a lot of upside. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I kind of hinted at it before, but, and, and certainly Greg and, and Richard have also. So they, they came here with the promise from uh, a previous governor, oh, we're gonna change, we're gonna change mm -hmm. the world. And what happened almost immediately after that is we went through more than a generational depression. You know, uh, it's something that hopefully we'd only see once in, in our lifetime. Yeah. And, and now we know what our grandparents, or depending on where we are, but, yeah. you know, our parents or grandparents talked about. Mm -hmm. Now, now we've lived through that, mm -hmm. and a lot of people aren't here, but but Torrey mm -hmm. Pines is, mm -hmm. and so is the city, mm -hmm. and we survived. Yep. We're stronger for it. Exactly. So in life, there's really only you have uh, one choice to make: two questions, mm -hmm. or sink or swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we swam. We swam. Yep. And and now we're sh now we're strong. Because we've been we've been swimming with monkeys on our back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now true. now they're coming off, mm -hmm. and we're going to get to see how fast we can we can swim. And I think that uh, a lot of people are going to be surprised, yep. and that uh, most, if not all of us, will be delighted mm -hmm. by the results. We're we're proud of what we've done. We're proud of being in Port St. Lucie. This is who we are. Great. Thank you for coming on today it's, and it's sharing pleasure. your time to give us this right Well, it's important for us to, at any time there are questions from uh, city council or anybody, we're happy to answer the questions. We would rather answer the questions, even if they're difficult questions, 
rather than have rumors float around, it, it just please contact us, you know, through the mm -hmm. appropriate channels, and we can give, we'll give straight answers. Thank you again for joining us, and thank you for watching this edi special edition of PSL Living or the Mayor's News You Need PSL. Right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.